I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shores, very deeply stained within, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters lifted me, thou safe am I. Love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. <clears throat> love lifted me, love lifted me, love lifted me, when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. Good morning, praise the Lord. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, God bless you. God bless you, God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, God bless you. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. God bless you. God bless you. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. The Lord is good. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Well, God bless you and praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to morning prayer with Pastor Reginald Davis. It is another blessing, another blessing to be with all of you, and we thank God for those who are coming in to join our prayer meeting this morning and thanking God for his goodness and his mercy to everybody. The Lord remains faithful to us and we remain grateful to him. He has done so much for us that all we can do is say thank you. And so we are indeed thankful for all of you who joined us today in prayer. As always, if you have a prayer request, you can place it in the comment section. If it is of a personal nature, you can send it to us um, via our inbox through Messenger. And it's just simply Reginald Davis. And we'll gladly um, take those and others before the Lord. Um, we're thanking God because he continues to answer prayer. Um, but we continue to have things to pray about and people that have needs. So we want to intercede today for the needs of those who... Um, we know and love and those that we know need a blessing from the Lord Jesus Christ. I, I want to continue in our thought um, or in our study of the Gospel of St. John. And we're still in um, chapter 13, which has been a rich chapter. Um, we've talked about washing feet. We've talked about Judas. And today the Lord makes a shift in the word that I think is necessary um, after you discuss and talk about the concept of betrayal. So we're in St. John chapter number 13, and I just want to read verses 34 and 35. St. John chapter 13, verses 34 and 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another. As I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another, as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. I want to talk today for a few moments about the commandment of love, the commandment, and you can underscore that word commandment, the commandment of love. It is so interesting that this 13th chapter deals with Jesus resolving a conflict through the washing of feet. Jesus confronting 
the betrayal of Judas. And then he almost randomly, and it's not random, but it appears randomly, shifts gears and says a new commandment I give unto you. There was a power struggle among the disciples about who would be the successor of Jesus in leading the group. That caused him to have to wash feet, to emphasize the um, requirement of service if you're going to lead in the kingdom. And then he confronts the man that will be, and announces that he's going to be betrayed by someone that he is connected with, with whom he has a relationship. And then he says, a new commandment I give unto you. Not a suggestion, not a piece of advice, not something I wish you would do, but it is a commandment. And I want to say it again, that love is a commandment. It is not a suggestion. And so you're not allowed to just only love people when it's convenient. And that's really, if you focus on what he's, what has been addressed in the previous part of the chapter, he's making it clear that love is a commandment. It's not an emotion. It's not just a feeling. It's not just a slant or a disposition. He's saying that even if you're in a struggle with somebody, you're commanded to love them. He is saying that even if someone betrays you, you're commanded to love them. Because even though Judas betrayed him, he loved Judas. Judas was destroyed by his guilt and by his remorse. He was not destroyed by Jesus. Jesus didn't do anything to Judas. Judas betrayed him and Jesus took no act of retaliation. He did nothing to Judas, although Judas betrayed him. So that's why he announces you're going to have struggles. He announces there's going to be disagreements. You're going to butt heads. You're going to be at odds with each other. You might even be betrayed by somebody in the group, but I'm commanding you to love. Oh, God. Hallelujah. I'm commanding you to love. I'm commanding you not just to love the easy people and not just to love the people that are in your corner and not just to love the people that like you and that get along with you, but I'm commanding you to love. And, and I'm going to establish the standard of love. Because some people love and their love is lukewarm and their love is sometimey and their love is um, inconsequential because people never really feel that they are loved by them. Their love sometimes appears to be shady. And so Jesus says, so there will be no dispute. Let me tell you how you're supposed to love. Oh, let me tell you how you're supposed to love. This is my commandment, he says that ye love one another as I have loved you. So don't look, don't love them because what is typical of human people and what is typical of people is that we tend to love people like we think they love us. And so if they love us warmly, we love them warmly. If they love us mm, kind of lukewarm, we love them lukewarm. If we if they love us sometimey, we love them sometimey. We tend to reciprocate what we receive from people as it relates to love. But the standard that Jesus gives is as I have loved you, that's how you love one another. Don't love people the way they love you. Because it is entirely possible that they may not love you correctly. Don't love them the way you've seen other people love you. Because other people may not have loved you correctly. Don't love them the way that you have witnessed love in past relationships. Because that may not be the correct form of love. The only way you can love people correctly is you have to love them the way Jesus loved them. Oh, hallelujah. Now, now, now you, you, we can spend all day, all night talking about how Jesus loves, but I just want to focus on a couple of things. First of all, Jesus loved unconditionally, meaning that there were, no, there were no strings attached to Jesus' love. He's loving people who don't even talk to him. 
He's loving people that don't even consider him. He's loving people that don't even have any desire or love, oh God, or any, any inclination towards him. He loved you when you turned your back on him when you said, I don't want this Jesus thing. I don't want this, this church thing. I don't want this Holy Ghost. I don't want to love him. And he kept on loving you. The Bible says with loving kindness, have I drawn thee. What drew me to Jesus was love. What drew me to Jesus was his love. I'm going to talk about that in a moment. He said, as I have loved, he loved us when we failed him. He loved us when we did not consider him. He loved us when we were inconsiderate towards him, yet he loved us. And that's the standard that the Lord has given us for how we should love people. Not how they loved us, but how did Jesus love us? Oh God, hallelujah. How did Jesus love us? How did he love us? Did, did he turn his back on us? Did he ignore us? Did he not um, reach out to us in our need? No, he loved us consistently, constantly, unwaveringly. He continued to love us and he loved us even when we failed to love him back. Oh, hallelujah. Even when we failed to love him back. As I have loved you, ye also love one another. Ye also love one another. Ye also love one another. As I have loved you, I need you to love each other. That's what's going to allow you to serve each other. That's what's going to allow you to forgive one another. That's what will allow you to overcome obstacles and deficiencies and dysfunctions and arguments and conflict. You have to love. Ah, oh, Shatiyama, you have to love the way I loved you. Oh, God, you have to love the way I loved you. And it has to be a deliberate choice. Oh, God. Hallelujah. I didn't, I just didn't fall in love with you. I've loved you from the beginning. I've chosen to love you. And the love that you're going to share with each other has to be that love of deliberate choice. Deliberate choice that translates, listen to me, into sacrificial action. Because if you examine the love of Jesus, it's the love of sacrifice. And you don't really love someone if you don't have the capacity to sacrifice for them. If the love has a, a, an end, if the love has a limit, if the love has some kind of time clock attached to it, then it's not really love. But if the love takes you to the cross, if the love takes you to sacrifice, if the love takes you to giving of yourself, then that's the love of Jesus because his love was deliberate. His love was intentional. His love was sacrificial. His love was deliberate. His love was intentional. His love was sacrificial. His love was deliberate. It was not accidental. It was not coincidental. It was deliberate. His love was intentional. He intended to love us and his love was sacrificial. His love took him all the way to the cross. His love took him from judgment hall to judgment hall. His love took him into places of torture and torment, oh God, and sacrifice for sins and for deeds that he not he did not commit his love was sacrificial and how can you love and it not cost you anything oh shatana mosa how can you love and you not pay for that love how can you love and you never feel the pain that is sometimes associated with loving somebody Hallelujah, because that's not the standard that Jesus left. If you have a love that doesn't push you, if you have a love that doesn't push you to sacrifice, if you have, the, if you have a love that doesn't make you intentional about the love, then guess what? It's not Jesus' kind of love. It's the fleshly love. It's the carnal love. It's the love of the mind and the love of the good feeling. But when that love is deliberate, when that love is intentional, the Bible says because he has set 
his love upon me. That means God deliberately put his love on you. You're not going to get away from it. You're not going to escape it. You're not going to run from it. I'm going to put this love on you because I'm deliberate about who I love. I'm intentional. Oh God, I make things happen just because I love you. I do things just because I love you. I act in a certain way just because I love you. You think I would do all of this if I didn't love you? Yeah, I'm doing this because I'm intentional about my love. And if my need to love you takes me to a place of sacrifice, then guess what? We're going to the place of sacrifice because that's what love does. That's what love does. It's intentional. It's deliberate. It's sacrificial. And then he says, hallelujah, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. How will people know that we are the legitimate, genuine followers of Jesus Christ if we fail to imitate his love? How will they know? A lot of people claim to follow Jesus. A lot of people claim to be identified with Jesus. A lot of people claim to be connected with Jesus. But how will they know it except they see the type of love that Jesus exemplified into those who claim to follow him? If I'm claiming Jesus, he's my savior, he's my Lord, he's my deliverer, he, I'm walking with him, I'm a Christian, I'm born again born of the water, born of the spirit. What is the evidence? What is the deliberate evidence that somebody can examine that you love Jesus if you fail to love one another? If I'm a disciple, I'm a follower, I'm a learner, and I'm an imitator of Jesus Christ. So I must follow him so that I can know what it means to love like Jesus loves. I have to learn how to do this. Oh God, I've got to learn how to do this. That's why love is not a feeling. It's a learned behavior. I've got to learn how to love people because everybody I'm dealing with is not always lovable. Some of the people I'm, de I'm dealing with are difficult. Some of them are challenging. Some of them are mean. Some of them are hate-filled and hateful, and yet I'm commanded to love them. I got to learn how to do that. Oh, whoo, gosh, I, I got to learn how to do that. I got to learn how to do that. And then I have to imitate what Jesus did. I have to imitate what Jesus did. How did Jesus do this? How did he do this? Because remember, it's following the heels of um, division and conflict and betrayal. But yet we're commanded to love and your love may come on the heels of conflict. It may come on the heels of division. It may come at, 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 as the aftermath of betrayal, but yet you have commanded, I'm commanded to love. I'm commanded to love. I have to do it when it's not easy. You have to do it when it's not convenient. You have to do it when it's not reciprocated. That means they're not going to give it back, but you're still commanded to give it. Oh, God. And, and, and that's the commandment of love. I'm going to testify. And then we're going to pray. <clears throat> I got saved, received the Holy Spirit when I was nine years old. And in all reality, I do not have a testimony of people of me hearing this fire and brimstone sermon or this compelling sermon, and I was suddenly convicted and I was saved. That is not my testimony, all right? Some of you have that story. That's not my story. I, in fact, for the most part, I remember very few sermons that were preached to me before I got the Holy Ghost at nine years old. So you say, well, Bishop, how'd you get saved? The saints love me to Jesus. They love me to Jesus. My parents had separated. We had moved to North Carolina. 
and found a little church, Refuge Church on Booth Avenue. The late Bishop Rufus Hargrove was the pastor. And from the moment we walked in the door, we saw the love of the saints. We didn't have a car. People drove 13 miles one way to pick us up to bring us to church every Sunday, every Wednesday, every Friday. They would get in, no charge, nobody wanted gas money. They drove their own cars, they drove the church van, but they got us to church every time the doors were open. There was a youth minister there, Minister Larry Green, who took the time to talk to me, nine years old, nine-year-old kid, confused, disturbed by the separation for, of, of my parents, and he just talked to me about Jesus. He talked to me about my soul. He didn't preach to me. He just asked me, what were my, what were my thoughts about Jesus? And one Wednesday night, this man who took time with me, who loved me, who talked to me, who showed kindness to me, I was at prayer and he asked me, do you want the Holy Ghost? And I said, yes. I didn't say yes because I was afraid of hell. I didn't say yes because I had heard some compelling sermon. I said yes because somebody who loved me offered me the Holy Spirit. And if we would begin loving people, they will accept the Jesus. Huh? Woo. They will accept the Jesus that we offer them. And yes, that night, March 31st, 1976, the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost. I was loved into this salvation. I was loved into this plan of God. I was loved into my place in the kingdom. And God help us to love each other into the kingdom of God. Let's pray. Oh God, we thank you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we love you today. We thank you for this morning. We thank you for, Lord, well bodies and sound minds. We thank you. Oh, hallelujah, for your grace and your mercy and your kindness that you've extended towards us. Jesus, we thank you. Oh, hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, first of all, for your love. Your love that drew us, your love that has sustained us, your love that has kept us, your love that saved us, your love that, Lord, keeps us daily, your love that's exemplified by everything that you do, everything that you say. God, we thank you today. Oh, oh God, for your love. Your love is so rich, Lord. Your love, oh God, drew us when nothing else could keep us when nothing else could bring us. We were brought to you, oh God, by your love. Lord, it came through another person. It came through your mercy. It came through your sacrifice, but it came nonetheless. And we are grateful today, my Shataye, for your love. Thank you, Jesus. Oh God, for giving us that love. Oh, thank you, God, for showing your love through your sacrifice at Calvary. We know you love us, oh God, because you meet our needs. We know you love us because you gave yourself for us. We know you love us because you saved us in spite of ourselves. We know you love us, oh God, because you've kept us, my God, when we did not even want to be kept. Lord, we we know you love us because you have never abandoned us. You have never forsaken us, but you have remained constant and steadfast. Oh, Shatana, oh God, in your reflection and your revelation of your love towards us. So Lord, we celebrate and we thank you today, oh God, for your love. We thank you today for your mercy. We thank you today for your grace. And Lord, we come in prayer today, oh God, praying that you would help us, Lord God, to love like you. Lord, people are still difficult. People are still challenging. People, oh my God, are still sometimes hard to love. But we're turning to you, Lord, to give us the power and the capacity, Lord, to love everybody, oh God, that we are connected with. We're praying, my God, that we can 
can, Lord, imitate El Shaddai, oh God, through our discipleship, your love, oh God, for one another. Lord, we're praying, Lord, because we've suffered, oh God, in bad relationships. Lord, we have been, oh God, betrayed. Lord, we have been in the midst of confusion. Lord, we've been misunderstood. And, oh God, we've been at odds with people. But Lord, we're praying now that you would allow the love that is in us to come to the surface. Lord, we're praying now that the love that you have planted in our spirit would be what people see. Not a fleshly, carnal, oh God, inconsistent love. Oh God, but a deliberate, intentional, sacrificial love. Oh God, let it be exemplified. Oh God, first, oh God, in one another. Oh God, let it be exemplified in our homes and our families, our marriages. Oh my God, our dealing with our siblings, our dealings with our children, our dealings with our parents. My God, let us love like you would have us love. And Lord, as we minister to each other in the church, oh God, let love abide. Let it abound. Oh God, let it overflow in us until everybody can see and feel that we love one another. Oh my oh God, let it, oh God, carry over to how we deal with people that have yet to know you. How we love, oh God, our neighbors, how we love the sinner, how we love that person that may have even mistreated us or may have even tried to hurt us. Oh God, help us to love them, oh God, to the point of deliverance. Help us to love them to the point that they will accept you and come to know you. God, let the love flow in the church. Lord, you said because of iniquity, the love of many shall wax cold. But Lord, we pray that you remove iniquity and you transplant it into love and that the love flows and flows and flows and flows. Oh God, until people see it in every action, hear it in every word. Oh, Shantanobo Satanaye. Oh God, Feel it in every touch, my God. Feel it, oh God, even in the in what comes out of our mouths. Let them know and understand that we love because you loved us. Oh God, and because we love today, Lord, we bring the prayer request and we bring the needs of every person that is on this call this morning. Lord, we bring every situation. Oh God, we bring every problem before you. God, we bring every, oh God, everything everyone is dealing with, my God. We lay it on the altar and we ask ask you, oh God, to have your way and to minister to their needs. God, we pray, loud God, Ashanama, that you would encourage those that have been hurt, that you would strengthen those that have been broken, that you would, oh God, deliver those that have been betrayed. Oh my God, that you would help those that have been in the midst of conflict, that you would give them life and strength and you would bear them up now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray that you would let forgiveness, oh God, flow in every relationship. Oh God, forgiveness, Oh, God, that releases the offender and releases the offended. Oh, God, let forgiveness move among us, my God. We pray today for the sick. Lord, I need you to bless Minister Allen right now. Lord, touch his body, touch his spirit, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, remember Mother Clark today. Oh, Katana Yeshe. Oh, God, remember, Lord God. Oh, God, Martha Velasquez in Santa Domingo. My God, oh, God, strengthen her now. Lord, you've worked a miracle in that lady's life. Life. Oh God, our precious sister. Oh God, but I want you to finish the work, Lord, and raise her up, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I'm praying today, Lord. Hallelujah for every person that said they needed prayer for the sick. Remember Maurice today, my God. Remember Pastor Jackson. Remember, oh God, Sister Perry, Lord God. Remember, my God. Oh God, Pastor Dykes. Remember, Lord God, in the name of Jesus, Mother Holman, Mother Tanaj, Mother Carter. Remember, Lord God. Oh, God, Brenda, today, remember, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, remember them now. Touch because we know that you're able. God, remember Mother Jenkins right now. Oh, God, stretch out your hand. Your arm is not too short that it cannot save. Your ear is open, my God, to our cry. Remember Pastor Daniels and Lady Daniels. God, remember everyone that said pray for me. And remember Deacon Ganey today, my God. Oh, God, touch and deliver and heal because we know you're able. Lord, you're the God above every condition. My God, you're the God above heart disease. You're the God above, oh God, oh God, you're the God above cancer. You're the God above diabetes. You're the God above COVID. You're the God above every situation, every dysfunction, and we know you're a healer. Lord, I want you to wrap your loving arms up and help us to love the grieving. Help us to love the bereaved. Help us to love that person that lost a loved one and is still struggling. Oh God, every day crying, every day. 
today. Oh God, ill at ease. My God, give them peace now. That passive all understanding. Remember the Brian Hopkins family. Remember the Melvin family. Remember the Pryor family, the Rose family. Remember, my God, the Ransom family. My God, remember every family, the White and the Austin family. Remember Ellen today, God, in the name of Jesus. Oh God, comfort her heart. Remember Georgia today. Oh God, remember Lady Davis right now. Oh God, every grieving heart, God, stretch out your hand. My children, oh God, remember the Davis family, God. Remember the Baskin family. Lord, these grieving hearts, they need the comfort of your spirit. So God, minister to them now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray, Lord. Oh God, as the numbers spike, Lord, that you'll bring those numbers down. Oh God, help us. Oh God, oh God, I know so many are waiting on a vaccine. Oh God, but we're waiting on you. Oh God, because you're the healer. Oh Shanobo Satanaye, you can reverse this course. Oh God, in the name of Jesus. Oh Shitanobo Satanaye, let us act in wisdom and faith, my God, as you reduce the numbers. Oh God of COVID victims, Lord, we pray for the government today. We pray Shanobo Satanaye for peace in the land. We pray against divisiveness. Oh God, we pray against Shanobo Satan. Oh God, evil machinations. Oh my God, deliver and touch now because we know that you're able. We pray for the entire body of Christ. Lord, that you would strengthen the church, that you would edify the church, that you would build the church, that you would cause the church to act in a spirit of urgency, that you would cause us to move in revival, that you would cause us to love and witness, that you would cause us to share the gospel with everyone that would hear the word. God, right now, save and deliver because even in the pandemic, you're saving. Even in the pandemic, you're convicting. Lord, touch the heart of the backslider and bring them back to you, God. Lord, strengthen every apostle, prophet, pastor, evangelist, teacher. Oh, God, every bishop, every elder, every mother, missionary. Oh, God, every saint of God, every psalmist, every young person. My God, let them feel your presence. In such a way, God, that life is birthed in them. Lord, save to the utmost. Lord, deliver because we know that you're able. Lord, bring down high places. Oh, God, make provision for that person that's unsure about their rent, unsure about their food. But God, open a door. Oh, God, the government refuses to act. But Lord, you are the provider and you are the source. So God, send help, Mashataye, wherever it's needed today, God. Oh, God, bless us today as only you can. Strengthen us as only you can. Edify us, God, as only you can. Oh, Katama, most of all, Lord, because you've loved us, help us to love, God. Oh, Shanalobosi, Atanaye, help us to love. Bless us today, God, as only you can. Make this day productive, restful. Oh, God, and bless and touch now. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Everybody give the Lord a praise. Everybody give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Here's my confession today. Jesus loves me. And he is teaching, hallelujah, me to love. Hallelujah. Jesus loves me and he is teaching me, hallelujah, to love. Jesus loves me and he is teaching me to love. Oh God, hallelujah. Jesus loves me, saints, and he is teaching me to love. He's teaching me. He's teaching me. 
Oh, he's teaching me by example. Hallelujah. He's teaching me to love. He's teaching me to love. Hallelujah. He's teaching me to love. Bless the Lord. He's teaching me to love, saints. I didn't know how until I met Jesus. Hallelujah. But he is teaching me how to love. Every day he shows me. Hallelujah. Every day he shows me. Every day he shows me how to love. Hallelujah. Oh God, every day he's showing me how to love. Hallelujah. He's showing me how to love. Didn't know it until I met him. Still learning it every day, but he's teaching me. Hallelujah. How to love. Hallelujah. He's teaching me. He's teaching me how to do it. He's teaching me how to do it. He's teaching me, praise our God. He's teaching me how to love. Didn't know it, didn't have, wasn't even aware of it, but he is teaching me, hallelujah, how to love. He loved me. He loved me first, and now he's teaching me how to love. Hallelujah. Yes, I want to love like Jesus. I want to do it just like Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to do it just like Jesus. Hallelujah. He's teaching me how to do it. Praise God. He's teaching me how to do it. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining us this morning in prayer. And you can stay connected to Refuge Temple 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You can join Refuge Temple. This service will be available on our Facebook page and on YouTube. You can also go and access our um, podcasts, which are aired on Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Um, there should be some new messages loaded um, today, I'm hoping, so that you'll have those for your edification and your growth. And please share them with other people, people that you love, people that you know need encouragement, people that you know need to hear a word. Share it with them and let them enjoy the word of God that the Lord has allowed us to share on these various mediums. Throughout the week, Monday through Friday, you can join us on our um, radio broadcast, which airs at on GregoryGospel.com, GregoryGospel.com, every day, Monday through Friday at 1130. We want to invite you to share with Refuge Temple, either in, in person or virtually. And on this weekend, with, this Sunday, we have a great service at six o'clock. We have service all day, of course, prayer in the morning, Sunday school, morning worship. But at 6 p.m., we continue the celebration of our 25th church anniversary. And we have the women of worship. And these are women of God who down through the years have poured into Refuge Temple and have shared with our church and our ministry. And they're going to be on the Zoom on Sunday evening with Lady Davis. And they include... Um, Mother Joan Keefe, they include Lady Diane Parrott, they include Pastor Susie Wright, co-pastor Dorothea Wise, they include um, Sister um, Missy Tyson, hallelujah. They're going to share in that fellowship on Sunday evening and you can join and be with them and you'll certainly be blessed by that fellowship and we're going to remember and encourage as we go forward. As always, you can sow into Refuge Temple, all right, and you can mail a love gift to P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina. P.O. Box 3552, Burlington, North Carolina, or you can give online at our website, RefugeTempleNC.com, RefugeTempleNC.com, or you can give through our cash app, which is simply the dollar sign, the number one refuge. But look, today, 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 love somebody. Today, love somebody. Today, go out of your way and be deliberate, intentional, and sacrificial. But today, please love somebody. It's not a suggestion. It's the command of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Until tomorrow morning at 630. This is Pastor Davis. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.